And we are at the last day here at Enterprise Connect with Jim for 5.9. Jim, how are you? I'm great, Evan. Thanks for having me here. Well, it's been an extraordinary week. Always a big milestone in the industry here at Enterprise Connect. What are the top one or two things top of mind? What are your takeaways from this week? Well, I think we can stop at number one, which is <laughs> AI is everywhere. Every booth, every vendor, they've got AI somewhere. And, you know, if you don't have AI, you obviously didn't get the email. So it's interesting how it's evolved. 12 months ago, AI was, or Gen AI, was pretty nascent. Folks didn't know what to make of it. Their most experience was with something called ChatGPT, which effectively was a packaged app around the technology. And there was some FUD. Is this going to replace Contact Center entirely, CCAS? Is it going to augment and improve? And I think what we found one year on is that it's the latter. This really exciting technology has allowed vendors to quickly innovate and quickly deliver incremental value. So it's starting to settle in and with a better understanding about what it will do for us. But you know what, in 12 months time again, it's going to be radically different. We're going to see new and exciting capabilities next year. I saw a McKinsey study uh, an article just this week talking about uh, the contact center and, and, and customer experience being the most impacted area by LLMs and, and by AI. Um, but how, how is this unfolding from the 5.9 perspective? What are the immediate sort of ROI paybacks, the opportunity with Gen AI in the contact center? I mean, I, I, we kind of look on it as, uh, as an accelerant. Yeah. It's making things move much, much faster, helping things move much faster than we've seen before. The first thing, of course, is innovation. We've had our, as an example, our agent assist product on the market for a couple of years now. But the pace of innovation, even within that product itself, that we are using AI or Gen AI engines under the hood to deliver innovation much, much quicker. The other thing that Gen AI is doing is making applications that actually have been around for a while. Mm but they were solely the preserve of the largest enterprises. They can only be afforded by those enterprises. They had long selling and long implementation cycles. And in many cases, they were out of date the day they went live. And then to maintain them was expensive. And Gen AI cuts through that tough to justify ROI model, lots of promise and not necessarily all the realized benefits. And Gen AI, because of the fast innovation cycle, the fast implementation cycle, and also the affordability of applications powered by that technology is changing and accelerating capabilities and adoption of new applications. The third thing is accelerating capabilities we just haven't seen before. Mm. Whether it's in something as simple as auto summarization, it really didn't have a lot of that in the market, especially not happening in real time, but now we're seeing it. It's one of the first applications that the CCAS vendors have introduced it's one of the ones that's so easy for businesses to see an ROI on, to measure it, to understand how many seconds or indeed minutes of agent time are saved. And then of course, in terms of a agent assistance type application, making every agent your best agent. Mm. You know, how do you move from agents that are paid at the lower end of the salary scale, where actually they're delivering at the higher end of value? So maybe it's a strong argument for agents to ask for a, for a pay raise because they're being so much more effective and efficient. And then the, the fourth item, and this, I think this is profound, in the migration from PREM to CCAS, somewhere around the 30% mark is what industry analysts kind of estimate. And we've seen some very measurable hockey stick moments in, in the migration to CCAS. We saw, a bit, it's almost like the introductory hockey stick around 2007, 2008, the economic downturn for businesses needed, needed a different way to serve their customers, more cost effective, more efficient. We saw that first real really profound hockey stick. We saw another hockey stick around 2014, 2015, as some conversational AI technologies uh, started to come into the contact center, arguably with something around what Google did with CCAI and their capabilities. Again, that was causing another hockey stick effect. The most profound one so far, for unfortunate reasons was the pandemic. The move from prem to contact center just went through a, a skyrocket acceleration during, during that phase. And now we're seeing another one. Gen AI is powering another phase of migration to the cloud. The re main reason be, if you're not 
moving to the cloud, you don't get access or don't get easy access to these Gen AI powered capabilities, which means you're falling even further behind your competitors, because your competitors certainly are. And that is another hockey stick that's now permeating into the large enterprise space, which, which typically was the more conservative with respect to move to the cloud, and we're now seeing that opening up because those businesses stand to gain the most from the new advanced capabilities. Well, it's a fantastic opportunity. You also introduced this week your Gen AI Studio, which is going to really turbocharge uh, customer adoption and deployment. What's been some of the early feedback from those, those uh, first customers, first adopters of Gen AI Studio? Well, the, the, the thing that we've kind of hung over at Gen AI adoption for the last 12 months has been concerns about enterprises putting their data hmm. into, into the models that the Gen AI vendors uh, use. Concerns about security, privacy, all of these things. And then almost as a case of a rush to market, the models being used were largely being used in a generic fashion. Generic prompts going to the model, pulling back, uh, almost generic answers and therefore the risk of hallucination was, was quite high because those models didn't know about the intellectual property and knowledge mm. of the business. With Gen AI Studio, we break through some of those adoption impediments because we allow the prompts to be tailored and effectively simply engineered by the customer with the guardrails that are important to that business, which is the corpus of data or the guardrails in terms of criteria to go look for or in terms of the type of feedback, or in terms of, we call it our uh, dial of trust. How, how forward do you want to roll the dial if, you're not, if your answer isn't absolutely critical, mission critical, it's more informational, and how further back do you want to do it in, in terms of the dial of trust where you're literally taking the least risk, uh, zero risk, and be able to do that in your studio, operate on a on your data that you have in your business, all your prior customer interactions, and then model what an interaction would look like. So you're able to try something out, apply it to your data, and see cause and effect, and then tune it yourself. And putting that tool in the hands of our customers, our implementation partners, right up to systems integrators, whoever needs it. And they can get as sophisticated or as simple as they want. So it's really empowering the safe, and considered use of, of a very, very powerful engine. Well, so exciting, so much opportunity out there in the marketplace, and um, everyone's very excited for you and your customers as they leverage this technology. Speaking of which, you have so much under the hood that you haven't yet shown the marketplace here. What are you excited about over the next weeks and months as you gather steam here? Well, you know a little bit more than <laughs> some of the folks that will listen to this uh, podcast, but we have some exciting capabilities also based on new capabilities powered by Gen AI, looking more, and I give a teaser, in, in how to search within the customer's knowledge mm. and surface that for both IBAs and for agents. But we're also making quite substantial investments in our, our general principle of being open. We do not believe in being a closed environment, and therefore APIs that give customers choice to pick products or engines of their own Wow. So we architect to be engine agnostic, but we also architect and build APIs for customers to pick an agent assist product from a different vendor, or an, an next best action capability that's coming with their CRM. And we are doing that in, in two ways, one that's been available for quite a while. We were effectively first to market with our voice stream capability, the streaming of the real-time voice cloud to cloud, and all of the metadata associated with the interaction and the agent and the customer, and all of the events that are happening. Very powerful, it's type of capability that AI engines or voice speech processing engines absolutely need. And soon we'll be augmenting that with some text streaming, transcription streaming capability. And that really powers up uh, other engines and enables uh, customers to pick, a, as I said, engine of choice or product of choice. So our approach to Gen AI and AI powered applications is one of, if our product isn't what the customer needs, we're going to empower them to take a product from somebody else. Wow, very uh, enlightened approach and uh, very exciting future at Five9 and you're just getting started clearly, so the best is yet to come and thanks for sharing just a little bit of insight to see you at Enterprise Connect 25.
Looking right. forward to it. Take Thank care, you. Jim. Thanks.